the Lord. So glad to have you with us today here at God's Got a Plan. Oh, God, God is just in the business of blessing his people. And I do believe that God want to bless you. I believe that this is your day to be blessed. And if you can just stay with us for the next 28 in minutes or so, I believe that God's going to just reach into your heart. I believe that he's going to he's going to share some things with you today that's going to bless you real good. So I'm, 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 just, I'm just blessed today to be able to sit before you, to come into your home. God bless you. God bless you. Now, my opening scripture for today is coming out of Genesis chapter 3 in the 22nd verse. Genesis chapter 3, coming out of the 22nd, starting with the 22nd verse. And I'm going to read this into your hearing for those of you that might not have access to a Bible. And here's what it says. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us. The man has become. Now, you know that Adam and Eve, they're in the, they're in the garden. And you know they partook of that tree that they shouldn't have touched and ate. Of. But here's what he says. To know good and evil. And now least he puts forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So, you know, God said, I have to save man from himself. And he says, I love you too much. See, he loved us too much to let us stay in our sin. And he couldn't afford to, to let man, let's just say, to rob him of the relationship that he wants with each one of us. Because if Adam and Eve was able to eat, of, eat from the tree of life, then what would happen is we would be stuck in our sin forever. But look at, look at what scripture says now. 23rd verse says this. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. He had to put Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. He put them out of the Garden of Eden. And look what he says. To till the ground from whence he came from. In other words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and, from, and back to the ground we will go after we die. But look at what the 24th verse, and really, this is my target verse of Scripture. And here's what he says. So God drove out the man. He drove out the man. And he placed him at the east of the Garden of Eden, cherubims. He placed angels at the east end of the Garden of Eden. And why did he do that? And look at what he did. And a flaming sword which turned every way. He, the angel that that cherubim had in his hand to do what? To keep the way of the tree of life. In other words, to keep Adam and to keep man from touching or eating from the tree of life. Because what would happen? You would be stuck in your sin forever. So, so what are we talking about? The ministry of the flaming sword. The ministry of the flaming sword. And I would dare say that that ministry of the flaming sword is still very active today. Even though you can read it, and, and it first made mention of that flaming sword in Genesis 3 and 24. And really, I don't see that flaming sword anywhere else in, the, in, in Scripture. But I would dare say that that flaming sword is still doing what it is designed and purposed to do. Now, when I look at that particular, let's just say, text, I realize that Adam and Eve, because of the mere fact that they sinned and they, they, they partook of that tree, and, they, you know, and now because of their act, all mankind is now living in a fallen state, mainly because of the, 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 the fact that Adam and Eve ate of that tree, and now we are sinners. Why? Because we have inherited the sin that they brought onto the planet or brought into the planet and into the relationship that they have with God. 
it's so very important that we understand that, you know, God really saved mankind from themselves. He saved us from, our, from ourselves because he didn't want us to stay in the sin that we would have stayed in had we had Adam ate or ate from the tree of the tree of life. So it's so very important that we understand this. So when you also look and understand, you see that Adam and Eve was now out of harmony with the purity, and let's just say the purity and the beauty of the garden. They were out of harmony now. Why? Because they've allowed sin to come on board in that relationship that they had with God. So, you know, you don't, you know, so are you out of harmony with God today? You know, sin will rob us of that peace, that joy, that love. And, you know, sin don't always feel bad going in because, you know, if it was, if, it, if, if sin felt bad going in, we wouldn't do it. But there's something about sin that, that mesmerizes us, that, 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 that lulls us and, and draws us and pulls us into this darkness slow. It don't happen overnight. It, 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 it can happen slow. It can happen immediate. It depends upon you. It depends upon that relationship that you have with God. So, so, so Adam's expulsion from the garden showed him that he had to deal with what? The consequences of his sin. All sin has consequences. We have to understand that. You're not going to just get away with that, not with God. You know, the Bible says, as a man sows, so shall you reap. So Adam and Eve had to reap from the sin that they had, you know, brought into the, the planet. See, they listened to the devil. Eve listened to the devil. Adam listened to his woman. And it's so very important that we have God first in our lives. You have to have God first in your life, saints. You can't afford to, let's just say, allow an unclean spirit to, to have place in your life and have place in your life to the degree whereas the, that unclean spirit is in charge. You don't want that unclean spirit to be in charge because, saints, I want you to know he's going to do what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to do it, whenever he want to do it, and he's not looking for the, be for the best to come out of you. He's going to bring the worst out of you. You give him a, you give him a leg up. You don't want him to have that kind of authority or power over you. Understand, when that unclean spirit goes out of a man seeking rest and find none, he comes back into that house, which is you. He want to claim your body as his house. And if he can get in your body, he going to get in your mind, and he going to get into your dreams, your hopes, and those things you're believing God for. And he's going to work his show to do what? To break you down, to sift you like wheat. Why? Because he wants you to go away with nothing. He don't want you to think that God loves you. He don't want you to think that no good thing. He wants you to think that God has put you on a back burner and God is just not going to do anything good for you. Well, I'm here to tell you today. Oh, God loves you so much. And when you can begin to love yourself and understand, let me say something about that flaming sword. I really believe now that flaming sword was used back then to keep Adam and Eve and all mankind from having access to the tree of life, to keep them out of the Garden of Eden. Well, I believe that that same ministry of the flaming sword is still very much alive today. Why? Because I believe that the Lord now have that ministry of the flaming sword in place to keep the devil out of the lives of those of us who are saved and have confessed Christ and those of us who are repentant. In other words, he's going to keep the enemy out of your life with that ministry of the flaming sword. That flaming sword is still very active today. And this is why we call upon the Lord. And, you know, the Bible says, uh, Exodus 23 and 20, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into that expected place that I have prepared for you. That expected, what are you expecting for, expecting from God in your life? What are you believing God for? Well, I'm here to tell you that angel that is, is, is carrying that sword of the spirit, that sword to do what? To keep that unclean spirit, to keep that devil out of your life, 
to bind him up and so you're able to live that, that, that overcoming life. So you're able to live and say that I have the victory in Jesus' name. Can you say that today, my brothers and sisters? Can you say you have the victory today? And really, that's what this is about, because that ministry of the flaming sword will give you the victory. Oh, oh, my God. See, understand, the devil, don't, he, don't, he don't play fair. He don't fight fair, and he's just not fair at all. Now, there are times in our lives when we might even think that, you know, that Jesus is not fair and that he's not looking out for our best interests and so on and so forth. But if you can just stay with him, I'm here to tell you today, saints, if you can stay with him, he'll show you that he is fair and he'll show you that he had he has the best in mind for you. In other words, he wants to work all things together for the good for you. Why? Because he loves you. He loves you that much where he doesn't want you to miss the mark, where he doesn't want you to fall short, where he wants you to be able to bounce back, where he wants you to know he's near and not far, where he wants you to know you're well able to do it, where he wants you to know not to give up, not to give in, but to hold on to God's unchanging hands. Oh, God is a good God. Oh, he's a good God. And he's given you the, 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 the ministry of the flaming sword. That angel is in your life to bless you, to bring you into that expected place that God has prepared for you. And like I like to say, something that, that is prepared is already set up. Something that's prepared is already set up. And look at this, saints. Look at this. Look at this, saints. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Because we know God has a plan, and I want you to see, know, and understand how precious you are. Understand this. According, according as God has chosen us in Jesus before the foundation of the world. Did you hear what I said? God has chosen you to be in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. What am I saying? God has a plan, and he included you in his plan. And, and, and understand you are his workmanship created unto good works. When we talk about workmanship in the NIV, I believe it is in the NIV, the NIV call workmanship a masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. You're his masterpiece in progress. Oh, my God. God loves you so much and he want to bless you so good. He want to bless you so good, saints. So you have to be able to see that you were part of God's plan before the foundation of the world. And look at what he says, that we, that you should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So it's about God's will, not our will, to the good pleasure of his will. God does what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to do it, and why he want to do it. And it's so very important that we're in relationship with him, whereas we're talking with him, communicating with him, so we can know what his will is for the kingdom, so, he can, so we can know what his will is for our lives. God loves you so much. God loves you so much. I could never express it enough. Romans 8 and 31 says this, what shall we send, then say to these things? If God be for us, who or what can be against us? There are times when we're against ourselves. But this is why you have to be locked into this gospel. This is why the relationship, you have to keep that relationship you have with Jesus green. You have to walk by faith and not by sight because everything is not going to look the way you want it to look. And there are times when things are just going to crop up or materialize that's going to catch you off guard. And you have to be able to stand not just on, on what you know, but also on who you know. And who you know is Jesus. And Jesus is the rock today. He's your rock today. He's your rock in a weary land. And I'm here to tell you, he doesn't want you to go down. He wants you to keep on standing. Romans 8 and 35 says, what, who, can, who shall separate us from the love of God, from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress 
or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? See, saints, understand we have a very special relationship with God. And I'm talking about a relationship of intimacy. I'm talking about intimacy. When I say intimacy, I'm saying, God, into me see. Into me see. Intimacy. That's intimacy. In other words, I'm opening myself up to God because I know I can't hide anything from him. So, Lord, I want you to look down deep on the inside. Look in my heart. Look down in the depths of my heart, my soul. I'm telling you I love you, but I want you to see it for yourself because we can say one thing out of our mouths and then do something else with our lips or with our walk. You want to be able to live this and to be all of what we say that we are in Christ. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. That's Romans 8 and 37. For I, Romans 8, 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate me, separate you, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing, nothing. What's coming between you in the relationship that God desires to have with you today? What are you allowing to come between you and Christ Jesus? Keep him in the front row of your life. If you want to be blessed, keep him in the front row, and he'll show you. So today, we are blessed to know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And when I say nothing, you look at that word nothing and you break it up into two words. No thing, no thing can separate you from the love that you have with your God. And I'm talking about the Lord who's sitting high, looking low. The same flaming sword that was used to keep Adam from going back into the garden is the same flaming sword that's going to keep that devil out of your life. Are you hearing me? And I'm not going to say that every day is going to be a good day. I'm not going to say that because you've accepted Christ Jesus, you're not going to have to deal with trials or tests and that you're not going to find yourself in some dark situations, dealing with health or relationships. You know, things, hey, life is. And life truly is what you make it. But when you know that Jesus is on board in your life, when you understand that God's plan is the one plan and the only plan that, 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 that really is, is worth living for and, and, and working towards, then you can see that the ministry of the flaming sword is a good thing. Oh, I'm so blessed to know why. Because where that flaming sword is, that means there's an angel there somewhere. And he says, I give my angels charge over you to keep you, to bless you. Oh, my God. I mean, we have so many things in place to bless us today, saints. How can we lose? How can we complain about what we don't have when God has given us so much? He's given us so much more than what we deserve when he gave us his son who died on Calvary's cross. He's given us so much when he's given us his word where I can gain the wisdom, the knowledge that's needed in the multitude of counsel that I can take out of this word of God. He's given us so much when he's given us his Holy Spirit. Oh, my God, that Holy Spirit who's going to be my comforter, the one that's going to teach me. The Bible even instructs me and tells me that I don't need no man to teach me. Why? Because of the mere fact that Lord knows, my God, that the Holy Spirit will teach me all things to bring me into the truth that is in his word. This gospel, if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. I have to walk by faith and not by sight. I have to know, my God, without a shadow of a doubt, mm -mm, no shadow. There's no shadow or turning in God. Why? Because he is the light of the world, and he want to be the light of your life, and he want to let you know that you are too blessed to be stressed. Don't settle for anything less today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Don't worry about tomorrow. Enjoy today. Live today. Be today. 
Give today. That's all you have is what you have today, what you have right now. I'm talking about a right now God. I'm talking about a God that want to step in the midst of your situation and show you that he's well able to do what needs to be done in your life. He want to show you how much he loves you because sometimes we just got to see him do some stuff and that seeing him do some stuff will let us know, oh, he, he's got to love me with this stuff he's doing. Why? Because he loves to blow our minds. He loves to just, mm, mm, mm. he loves to show us Oh, my God. He loves to just open up those doors that, that we've been struggling to open. Matter of fact, he's able to put a bridge where there's no bridge. He's able to put a door where there's no door. Because he says nothing can separate you from that which he desires to give you. So whatever needs to be put in place, he'll put it there. He'll do it. And all he has to do is speak a word. I remember when the disciples was on that boat and they, when they pulled off from shore with Jesus, the Bible says he was in the hinder part of the ship just sleeping and chilling. And the Bible says a storm arose when they got out there in the middle of that sea. And the Bible says when that storm arose, the boat started taking on water and the winds were blowing and they were beginning to panic and to trip. And, but, 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 but they said, well, this is amazing. Jesus is in the back of the boat sleeping and he's not even afraid of nothing. And here we worrying about what's going on. So one of them went back there and said, Jesus, can you save us? And so on and so forth. And Jesus was saying, where's your faith? And that's what he's saying to you today. Where's your faith? See, unbelief will work against the good that God want to do in your life. And, and he's saying, if you have that mustard seed faith, I can move a mountain in your life. Matter of fact, not him, but you can move a mountain. Your faith is able to change things in your life. See, and, and what happened is when they got out there, Jesus spoke to the storm and he said, peace, be still. Mm, mm, mm. And he want to speak in your life today. Peace, be still. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. I thank God so much. Why? Because of his faithfulness. See, you have to be able to see the faithfulness of God in your life. Oh, God is not a man that he would lie. Oh, God is there. I'm here to tell you he's in your life. Sometimes he steps behind the scenes. He works behind the scenes so he don't want you to see, know, and understand what he's doing. Why? Because he wants to work unhindered. Because sometimes we, you know, we can put our little two cent in and we'll take it in another direction. So God says, I'm going to work behind the scenes in your life. And I'm telling you today that he's working a show, a good show in your life today. Have a little patience. Patience is a good thing. It's a virtue. And we have to be able to see that all things are working together for the good. All things are working together for the good. So the foundation of the world, God knew, before the foundation of the world, God knew you and chose you to be one of his saints. God knew you, chose you to be one of his saints. God's got an awesome plan for your life. And understand, you have help. You have help in reference to the ministry of the flaming sword. Like I said, Exodus 23 and 20, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into that expected place that God has prepared for you. Father God, we just thank you so much. Thank you for this day. I thank you for the leading of your spirit. Lord God, you said it's not by might nor by power. But Lord, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister right now. And Lord, you know those who are sick, Lord God, coming on this line today, viewing this program today. Father God, just like you spoke to the storm and said, peace be still, I'm speaking to that area of their body that is infirm. I'm speaking over that infirmity right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm declaring healing, a complete healing, restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm claiming it from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Be healed and with faith to believe it, it shall be done. Oh God, I pray for marriages, Lord God. I pray for reconcile, 
that you would reconcile relationships, Lord God. I pray that you would place forgiveness in our hearts, Lord. If there's anyone out there that's struggling with a relationship and find it hard to forgive, put forgiveness in their hearts today, Lord God. And just like you forgave us, help us to forgive another. And Lord, we're thanking you for loving us the way you do. And we realize and know that the best is yet to come. If there's one out there that doesn't know you in the pardoning of, of, of their sins, I pray, God, that you would heal, deliver, you would lead, bring someone into their lives that will bring them to a place where they can accept you and come into that. Matter of fact, pray this prayer of faith. Father, I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he suffered, bled, and died, that I can live and I can be forgiven of my sin. I believe that I'm now forgiven and I'm washed in the blood. In Jesus' name, amen. If you recited those words, believe me, in the spirit, you have just been saved and you are now in the kingdom. So, Father, I just thank you. I want to thank those of you who are reaching out to me. I want to thank my special friends there in, in, in England, uh, the Beeson family and those viewing us out there in England. I want to thank you for joining us and just being a part of this ministry and making God's Got a Plan a worldwide ministry. And I just love you so much. God bless you. My, my partners, those of you who are in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, in the Bronx, in New York City, in New Jersey, the metropolitan area, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to join us on our scripture meditation and prayer line. Join us. We have a beautiful family. We're growing, and it's just, just a sweet ministry on that prayer line. Uh, the playback number is listed first. If you can't catch us at 8, uh, catch us at that playback number any time of the day or night, and know we love you. Come back and see us again the same time, the same place, and on the same station. I love you so much. God bless now. Bye-bye. Yes, I believe.